Hey everybody, Hitch here from Nerd Cyclopedia. You know, if you're a fan of CBBS, you're going to really love our new show, the Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show, NCFS. Head over to that uh, that uh, show and go ahead and subscribe. Uh, we'd love to have you there again. Uh, that is uh, NCFS Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show. You'll catch me, DP Brown, and Michael, our new co-host over there. So check it out. And uh, oh, without further ado, here comes uh, Clone Wars Season 2 Part 3. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS with me and the nerds here uh, on our season two finale. So episode 17 to 22, yeah. we'll be reviewing today with you guys. Um, how's everybody feeling today? Feeling good, good. man. Awesome. Yeah. Good, man. Well, uh, before we get started here, um, you know, obviously some of you guys are new listeners to us. We're going to toss this over to our guy, DP, and he's going to show you guys and let you guys know how to find us on all our platforms. Nerdcyclopedia.com, people, make sure that you go into that website and um, click on all our links so you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and also Twitter at Nerdcyclopedia. Make sure that you are leaving us some feedback as well with emails, nerds at Nerdcyclopedia.com. Subscribe to our um, podcast. We have like a few of them in the Nerdcyclopedia Transcontinental. Yes. You know. Um, the network. <laughs> the network. Um um, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, um, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, we are yes. there. Also, make sure that if you're watching us on YouTube and on Facebook, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, getting the notifications, uh, also hitting the notifications, so anytime that we're on, you know that we're on. Um, make sure that if you're loving our content here on Carbonite Bounty BS, you're joining our Facebook Ooh. group. We are got some good you know memes going on and you know feedback and everything so um we're basically loving what you guys are doing thank you again for the um your contributions and we love hearing from you good stuff good stuff but yeah guys i mean uh, this is our finale of season two so um yeah i mean uh, really some really in-depth things some different stuff obviously that you know kind of left me with a couple cliffhangers but uh you know initially uh we'll start with you ken what what, what are your thoughts about the uh your uh, season two kind of uh, recap. Best, best season so mm. far. Um, <laughs> so far. <laughs> I mean, I'm a I'm a Boba Fett fan, so <laughs> this that's from the second half on. I, I don't even remember what happened at first. Half. <laughs> <How is it? laughs> and it was some good stuff it in that good. first half. Yeah, <laughs> there was. But as soon as that angry little kid, <laughs> with hair, he was like hippie dude. <laughs> <laughs> totally different than the other clones. I was like, oh, I bet that. I wonder if that's going to be Boba Fett. And then they're like, "What's his name?" Boba. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> it was a good season. Good. Uh, they're definitely up on the, uh, the. The graphics are better. The stories are better. It's the explosions. The. I mean, there's just a lot of good. Good stuff. Definitely worth watching. Right. What do you think about DP? Yeah, definitely finding their way, you know, this the back half of the season and everything. The animation is um Ken alluded to is way better um than what it was when we first started this whole thing out. I believe we mentioned that before. Um Boba Fett. <laughs> I was not expecting little Boba, baby Boba, you know, um to appear, you know, as in, in this show. I mean, it was just such a just such a pleasure, you know, just seeing angry little Boba. You know, um, do his thing and everything. <laughs> I mean, he's such a little, yeah. uh, you know. Um, so he gets you a little frustrated. Love seeing like um, the 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 Godzilla, like the um, Hitch yeah. and I was, you know, we were talking off yeah. mic and everything about like um, genre mashups and everything. So the 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 Zillow Beast was a very um, good storyline and everything for the back half of the season. So. And I mean, it provided like a lot of intense drama, you know, a lot of good action and everything. Great, great story arc, you know, to the end of the season there. Yeah, but I wouldn't call Palpatine a uh, like a advocate for uh, preservation of national uh, no, wildlife. No, no. Not at no. all. Not at all. No, this, don't go to him for that. Yeah, Peta was definitely on his on his ass. <laughs> <for that. laughs> He's probably against climate change too. Oh, so yeah. you know, 
look at Coruscant, not one goddamn tree anywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> so now it all makes sense. Oh, man. Yeah. And what, what are your well, thoughts? Well, I, I like these guys. I really enjoyed the Boba Fett uh, trilogy, and I especially appreciated that as we're coming into the book of Boba Fett, coming at some point, sometime soon. We're, we'll, we'll find out. I. Uh, <clears throat> so very excellent to see that story. I like the Zillow Beast a lot. This this tale of you know, uh, you know, you have to be careful about what we do to animals because maybe they do have, you know, sentience, and we can't be just oh I don't know killing sentient things <laughs> to take their body parts. That's a bad thing, a uh, bad thing to do. Um, Palpatine here is just so single minded, you know, single mindedly pursuing victory. Doesn't care about the moral cost, only the effective cost protecting his clones with the Zillow beast scales and the Zillow beast pays a terrible price for, you know, the Republic's preference of the Dugs. Uh, and that's, that sort of stinks. And I'm glad that we sort of stopped thinking about that for the rest of the season and didn't really come up again. And that's great. Cause I, <laughs> I didn't want, it was a bummer and I didn't want to talk about it anymore. Right. That was enough of that. Right. So for me, the switch to angry Boba Fett infiltrating the Republic somehow. And, you know, uh, trying to kill Mace Windu, and we know it's not Mace Windu's not dying out of a ten pole movie. We all know that he's got plot armor. So, <laughs> right. but we still see the cost of this. We see the cost mount, and as we we talked about repeatedly, these clones are all three dimensional. These characters are all three dimensional to us. So we see these like ruthless assassins mowing down clone troopers, and it doesn't feel like they're just faceless droids. It doesn't feel like stormtroopers felt like in Episode Four. It feels very very different so this is the this series is accomplishing something and it's giving depth to the faceless and that's that's really impressive right and i uh i also like the appreciation uh, that r2 got in this um you know he had a little bit of action there uh you know they gave they sent him he kind of had a mission there with and I, I like i it was different you know i like the back half of this season the interaction i guess between anakin and mace a lot different than the screenplay we saw in the movie so that was kind of unique to me. I mean, as far as, you know, how they clash and how Mace Windu was, because I mean, this is the first time we actually see him in the field. You know, you yeah. see him on the movies and he's kind of just like some like stern, you know, senior council member. So it's, it was nice to see him in action on the back half and how he interacts with other Jedi. You know? Yeah. Pretty much Sam Jackson's like, okay, you're going to pay me millions just to sit in the chair. Yes. <laughs> well, don't forget, this is what gave him the idea to go be in the Marvel franchise. Was be in the Star Wars franchise. You know what I mean? He's got, he's got, he's got anchors in both. So he's got, you know, he's got feet on both, uh, both of the pylons of Disney. Yeah. So he's just, he's just right. living with the mouse and probably making fifteen. He'd make fifty movies a year if they'd let him. I'm sure. He just, just works and works and works. Yeah. Love Samuel L. Jackson. I, uh, I thought that Mace having this, this repartee with Anakin about how Anakin's always showing off. And he has this this line, which is like, you let your droid feel things, which is, <laughs> which is really interesting to me, right? That he kind of looks down at Anakin for allowing his droid to have uh, personality. It was interesting to see also some of this anti, anti-droid you know, like bias where they t like uh, where that trooper says to R two D two like malfunctioning droid we use malfunctioning droids for target practice and R two D two gets all like like what do you mean you use malfunctioning droids you know what I mean gives them one of those <laughs> one of those uh, beefies um, I thought that was that was interesting it's interesting to see that that's kind of like an effect the war is having now on these guys right now they really don't like they hate robots and that wasn't something that I remember a lot from the beginning of the story right they weren't always talking about how much they hated the robots but now they're making jokes about them. It sounds like, you know, a bunch of people's uncles after World War II. You know what I mean? That's just kind of how it is. So I, I appreciate how they're giving some depth to this conflict. Like, it's going to have, um, you know, it's going to have an impact into the future. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and just uh, kind of kicking it off, you know, I know we talked about a couple of Ken's highlights as far as the Boba half. I mean, um you know, Ken, if you want to go in depth a little bit about that, what, what were your thoughts about, you know, as we see, you know, the young Boba after obviously um, <laughs> the death of Django? Well, I think we, I, when, when I saw that scene, you know, originally, you know, in, in the movie where he watches his dad get cut down, I knew there had to be some retribution because Boba Fett didn't just become this sort of solitary uh, uh, bounty hunter on his, on his own, you know, I mean, something drove him to that. So Mace killing his father and him watching it. So 
I knew there had to be some revenge story there. So that, that just, it just made sense. And I was, I thought, wow, perfect. They just dropped it in here. It was a nice little blip, nice little nugget. And I, I just, at that point I was like, wow, this is a really great story. I mean, this is really <laughs> awesome. Now I didn't, I kind of like, I wondered why he didn't, he wasn't successful. He tried three, three times to take Mace out and, <laughs> and, and well, I mean, he had like strategy and he thought yeah. about, it. I mean, it wasn't like he was just, you know, a little kid and a, playing a video game. He worked on this and he had a plan, but it like, it, it didn't work, didn't work like all this time. So maybe Mace is a little more, um, he, ha- he definitely had a, um, someone watching over him because uh, I thought Boba was going to get him a couple times, knocked him down pretty good. And uh, and like um, we saw that relationship with Anakin and Mace, because it was a lot different in, in the Clone Wars than it was in the movie. You know, it was a little more of a kind of an almost nurturing, uh, sarcastic, but nurturing relationship. Right. Um, in the movies, you didn't really get any of that really. But uh, uh, I really liked that. Uh, Boba got a little bit of a screen time. And um, I also liked the way it was a little bit of a, it was kind of like he thought he was going to get bullied, you know, like this yeah. mm-hmm. different, yeah. different. His hair's long. He's yeah. got this angry face. He does not talking to anybody. And I thought these other kids were going to like get up in his face, but uh, he held his own. And um, what was the, what was the one clone's name that befriended him? He had a, he had a, I can't, can't remember what his name was, but they became buddies. Yeah. And I would definitely stick with Boba. Like if I was like, I'm sticking with that kid because hey, we're going to, we're going to rule this entire platoon of little clones. But I, I like, it was really cool. Boba was single focus. I mean, he was out to get Windu and, you know, he would, he would, he would have left, he left those clones, you know, to, um, to die and everything, you know, just yeah. to proceed on his mission and everything. Um, So I thought that was pretty, pretty single single you know single minded focus you know of, of him for him to be you know such a tactician mm-hmm. you know with trying to um to kill um you know Mace Windu so that was pretty interesting you know depth to to Boba Fett to young Boba Fett and I would too if somebody cut my dad in half decapitated him in battle I'd go after in that in front fool. of you I mean in front of you <laughs> in front of, well he didn't know I, I, I mean, I don't know that Mace saw. Well, Boba I'm sure Fett, it wasn't did spite. <laughs> I don't mean that's right. why he, did. he didn't know that he just created an adversary right. who didn't. Right. Right. No, there's no way. There's no way. I mean, it's, it's, legit, no, it's I, a, it was a legit fight, right? I mean, he, Django was shooting him as he was jumping off the bat. It's it's not a murder. It's just you know, it's just what happens when two two Goliaths fight each other. One of them leaves. One of them doesn't. It's what it is. Yeah. My favorite part about Boba's inner inner uh, relationship with Mace, though, is how at the end, at the end of all this, you know, Mace he just goes, "I'm not going to forgive you to Mace," and Mace just kind of goes, "Tough." <laughs> He's just like, "Oh well, right. see you later, enjoy prison," and then just goes back. It's like we got to go kill you, some. You see, you, see, you see all this plot armor right? on me, you know. I'm going to survive this. You, uh, I don't yeah. Know. Then Boba's like, "I don't know. I'll probably be fine." You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Checks the watch. Oh, 1980. Well, yeah, I got, uh, no. it'll be all right. All uh, right. I really appreciate that that uh, dropping Boba in because it took. They didn't really. They didn't say Boba's name till the end of that first episode of that set. They really let you piece together what yeah. was going on. And I remember thinking to yeah. myself, as soon as they came into frame, I was like, that one looks a little bit like Boba. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> I guess they're making it, they're, they're shading it. And then he started being real shady. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I enjoyed that a lot. I thought that was a really neat way to illustrate how they're all sort of the same, but they're not. Is that Boba can kind of, you know, infiltrate in with them. But remember, Boba's like, what a third he's probably like what 11 or 12 years old a 12 year old clone is like that bald mm-hmm. guy <laughs> so he's like you yeah know i mean like what would it be like if any of us like you know played uh little league baseball you know what i mean <laughs> even like with our you know what i mean in the smaller body like we'd have like a 12 year old but we'd still be a lot better than the kids i mean i have to believe that so well, i get a quick question with the clones so do they age or, or are they just as is, um, as soon as they're born, they're it's accelerated development. I mean, how does how does how does that work? Well, yeah, I mean, I realize that how how fast how when does it slow down and does it speed up anymore or 
Like how, how does that, how does the acceleration, how does that sure work? It looks like it just or is, like is, is, is that lifespan, even defined? Right, team edge? Yeah, that's what I think of. But I thought with Boba specifically, he was a unique version of him because he wanted him to be like a child. And they kind of alluded to that in the movies. Because when you watch the movies to differentiate from this, I believe those clones were kind of like he's saying they were accelerated and then they were armored up and kind of put into the suits as uh, an adult or I guess a you know late teen. But when we see Boba, he was kind of, he got him from the incubation and kind of allowed him to grow up as a child because he always wanted a child. So I think there's different ways, I guess, you can speed up it. But uh, Boba was one that was not accelerated because he kind of wanted to have a child. Yeah, mm. that that's what, uh, that was part of the payment Django got. He wanted one clone that wasn't going to be in the program. So he literally, Django Fett is like super dad because he took a clone and made it his own and raised it like a real a real boy and that was that was the difference he wanted but he trained it to be a a, a a killer basically he put himself in that clone so actually boba fett's more dangerous than every other clone because he was he was raised to only kill and it didn't matter what he killed he just was trained to kill the clones are trained to kill who you tell them to kill mm. boba is going to kill who he wants to kill right mm. Right. It's like the first clone, kind of like we're saying with free will, you know. Yeah. You know, it's, it was like the introduction to, you know, the rest of them, whether it be Captain Rex or, or anybody else. I mean, it's kind of when you start to see free will associated with the clones would be, I guess, you know, Boba would be the first. Well, if Boba's capable of it, and he's the unaltered clone, and he's capable of free will, it makes you think everybody else is capable of free will. And we see him denying the order to kill here. That's a direct order to kill. With no other pretext, so it's it sent it sets an interesting table for the future, where perhaps yeah. the clones will be called to do something they may not want to do. How will they deal with that? You know, we'll mm. see. Who knows? Season three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about a twelve-year-old kid holding somebody hostage? I thought that was pretty crazy too. I mean, it's you know, at, at the end of it, like the whole this is weird. You know, he's. Yeah, that, that that whole thing at the end, um, and then and didn't we get um some Mandalorian stuff in there too? We got um a Mandalorian helmet, um, in one of the scenes where um, oh man, uh, uh, Anakin and um, Anakin and Mace was like trapped under the the thing for a minute. Yeah, it's like right? a calling card. Yeah. it's like my dad says hello. <laughs> yeah, it's right. like it's like super gangster. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. It's a message. It's a message from Boba Fett. It means you cut my dad's head off <laughs> and it blows up. <laughs> yeah. I didn't Boba know if it was like an Easter egg or gangster calling card. This is the way it is. This is a drive by. <laughs> yeah. This is the drive by in the galaxy of far, far away. This is what it is. I'm gonna drop a ship on you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love how they travel to these like different planets and stuff. I mean, everything is just yeah. like, you know, um, it seemed like everything is just in the vicinity of like wherever the, the central location is, but they just go to, you know, planet here, planet there. And, you know, the, 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 the ship and everything crash there. Um, it's this, this series is a lot more complex than I ever thought it was, was when I, when I first heard about it, you know, let, you know, that long ago. And I'm definitely appreciating the fact of the complexities, you know, that these characters bring. It's some, it's some, it's some really good adult stuff here, you know, even more so than what, what George wrote in, in the um, prequel stuff, you know, it's, it's a lot more, it's a lot more complexity, you know, to these, to these characters than I ever thought it was. It's interesting to see this this from like Palpatine's perspective too, because what this series makes so obvious is that his deal is that he wants to play a chess game against himself, and he wants to end the game without the pieces realizing he's playing a chess game against himself. And that's something that you know is really really awesome. It's something that is really at the core of what is the transition from the Galactic Republic into the Galactic Empire. 
And so, you know, mm -hmm. it's something that really sells that, right? It sells the deception. And you understand why the Jedi couldn't see the Sith. You understand why, because mm -hmm. you understand how they're, how he could get control of the Republic because he has control over <clears> both <throat> sides. He knows all the intelligence. And, and with his, um, with his, ang with, I mean, how mean he was about the mm -hmm. Zilla creature. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. People are starting to like saying, wow, you know what? Maybe this guy's crazy. Why are we follow? Why are we put? Why are we following this guy? Because at this point, he was, he was chancellor, right? Right. right? He was already pretty. He was in charge. Everyone had given him complete reign, and here he is. This is his first misuse of power that I that I could tell. I mean, really vagrant misuse of power. Well, he he got greedy. He saw he saw the Zillow beast and was like, OK, you know, um, he's starting to make decisions where, you know, uh, he's more methodical, more, you know, long term and everything. But as soon as he sees his Zillow beast and, um, you know, he starts to think, OK, oh, well, what can I do with this? What I can you know, what can I do with that? He gets really happy and he starts making really odd decisions. Go ahead. <laughs> well. I, I don't know about all this, but I mean, it made sense. Like, think yeah. about it. He, he could now make in indestructible armor. Yeah. So then I started I'm thinking, well, okay, that's a great idea. I'm not all for killing the poor thing, but let's, but the only way you can really get the, the research the, is that you get the DNA. you got to kill it. Okay. All right. Fine. The sacrifices have to be made. But then I'm thinking if he did this, why are the stormtroopers still so easy to kill? If he <laughs> if he got this technology and and put it into the armor, why are they still getting knocked off? Because you figure that's yeah. where we're right. Well, that's yeah. where well, we're now going to be these indestructible uh, w warriors, and but they still get picked off. So I didn't think he was actually going to get that technology done. I don't think he actually does it. Uh, the poor thing died, but I don't think he was able to to create any and get anything out of it which is a total waste of everything right <laughs> things dead and he didn't still didn't get any still, and, and and brought and brought the beast to um you know to um to the to, to the city and you know cause so much destruction and everything it was just like wow why did you why did you do this you know i mean it was even questioning right. why did he even bring it's, this it's here. all and that I, was, it's all part of his game to make sure that the Clone Wars is is a real thing to the people of Coruscant. He 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 has to make this impact the people of Coruscant because if they do not believe that the Clone Wars are a danger to them, they're not going to hand over power. So bringing the Zillow Beast mm -hmm. there, one, it sets this precedent that like the next time he says we should have killed, you know, I killed this thing because I couldn't bring it to you because it was dangerous. People of Coruscant are going to go. I remember that Zillow Beast. That was a terrible idea. We never should have brought him here, right? I mean, that, that seems pretty fair. So we have all this destruction. And, and of course, we know it. Uh, since we know that Palpatine's playing both set, both chess sets, right? Both both pieces, both sides of the pieces. And we know how episode three starts. We know that part of his strategy is to increase the feelings of jeopardy on Coruscant. And the Zillow Beast accomplishes that. While at the same time, forcing the Jedi to kill the Zillow Beast, dis, like discrediting them and getting him the scales that he wants. Because he's playing both sides of the both sides of the game, so he just says, "Do this, okay." Now it's over here. I mean, that it's easy, and nobody sees it. Yeah, smart on his part. Yeah, smart. I mean, yeah. Well, when you put it like that, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, if you want, you want to have everything. You want to have all the pieces, right. right? That's that's the only way to win a war is to have your have your hands in both pots, because. One side's got to lose, so you want to be on the other side. If you pick the wrong side and it loses, then what if what have you won? Nothing. So he's doing the right thing. This whole thing reminds me of when you know I was a kid, and you know me and my little brother would play Risk, and he would go go get a drink, and I would like yeah. take a turn for him, and all <laughs> all of a sudden <laughs> all his pieces were in the places I needed them to be for my turn, right? It's like, oh, well, all your guys <laughs> abandoned the frontier. And he'd be like, you can't. He'd be like, you can't do that. That's a, that's just a generic little brother voice. He'd be like, you can't do that, gut man. You can't do that. And the game would end anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so so I think it's almost like he's playing. That's what he's doing here. It's 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 a, it's incredible to, to watch him 
uh, keep both sides at each other's throats and not at his over and over and over. The blame is just shifted and it's, it's brilliant. You know, the weird part about all this is, is how like you see these Jedi, even masters moving so like headlessly, mm -hmm. like, it's just not like, you know, the council isn't moving like you would assume some people with high power to move. I mean, it's just, it's it's alarming how, how they, it shows that a lot of them haven't been in battle or maybe they were just maybe councilmen because the decisions a lot of them are making and, you know, how they're so spread out. It's not very strategic from the Jedi perspective. And it's easy for the Sith to then, you know, come into power and for them to be so, you know, everything's so clouded. But Team Itch... For that to be the case, the Chancellor would have to be a Sith Lord. Kind of. Right? Right? I mean, that, that would have Maybe. to be what's going on. And we both know that. We both yeah. know Palpatine. Who said that? Does anybody know that? No. 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 That's what's so insidious what about it, right? I mean, but that's what he's doing to them. He's like, it's like, well, if the Chancellor is, I mean, what, what? Well, the Chancellor's not going to lightsaber us all in the back. And meanwhile, he's just like, wham. <laughs> puts it away i don't know what happened here master yoda i don't know it's a terrible palpatine i want to edit that out but we go out live for a reason so i can't do that yeah that, that was like masterpiece theater that right, another nothing shrimp to do on with. the jedi no another so, shrimp on the hobby no so so this is the beginnings of the empire you know coming into power huh so this this yeah. is this is how how it, interesting interesting it seeds in the yeah. soil that this is, is crazy and wow when you look at it's, it's, it's it's a little scary too because i'm like thinking the shades of real life and everything you know it's it's crazy well, there's, there's historical precedent for all of this you know um when uh the nazi party took over germany there was a um something called a, there was a fire in like the capital the Reichstag, and they blamed uh, Jews for that. And so the idea was, if you create this jeopardy, you create a situation where people will willingly give up their civil rights. And then they, you know, once that's done, once you have people at your, you know, mercy, you do whatever you want to them. Uh, so that's that's mm. sort of the idea there. Mm. Star Wars, huh? Okay, yeah, it's a lot deeper than um than um than what I what I why what I what i thought you know so yeah these pre prequels um like i said that's the, the one great thing about the prequels because i think it spawned you know all these ideas that they that george you know then lent to other creators and writers and stuff to expand on and everything and i mean it's just it's just a really vast world here it's interesting that i'm learning as a casual as a casual viewer it's interesting to see how this series anchors uh, like here's the main line of star wars in the prequel trilogy universe rather than the original trilogy universe so it's just an interesting perspective yeah. for me because that's never how i ever ever saw star wars <laughs> <laughs> so so i guess a good question is um so far we watched you know um the um the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. Now we're into this so far and everything. Is it coloring you guys' perspective of, you know, what you just said, Hitch? Is it coloring, is it, are you getting a different perspective of everything so far? I mean, I know you've seen it, you know, um, Team Hitch, but it, as far as you, you, you Hitch and Ken, um, how, how is it, how, how is everything just so far? Well, I, I think the, I think once we go back and we're going to watch, Revenge of the Sith here and soon. A couple months. Yeah. I think more clarity on things. I mean, there's going to be more, more backstory, more uh, character uh, complexity. Uh, I think it's going to make more sense. I mean, if that's what you're asking. I mean, there was like, is is it is it is it making you appreciate what what George did with the sequels? Um, I guess watching this. I mean, I don't well, know. I I never had any trouble with. You know, I I never had any trouble with any of the, the prequel films. Oh yeah, it's everything. Ten, um, you, you said ten out of ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't like I don't know. <laughs> you, what know? You're, like, I, you can't nitpick that. That's pretty clear. You're yeah. right. I was that guy. I waited. <laughs> I mean, Re Return came out at eighty three, eighty four, and then there was nothing. There was nothing for f seventeen years. There was nothing, and and I waited like. This is going to be great. 1999 is coming to Phantom Menace. Oh, it, it was awesome. I loved it. I love Phantom Menace. I had no trouble with Jar Jar. I mean, whatever. I just wanted to see 
Star Wars again and hear these characters, Obi-Wan, Yoda, hear these characters that I, you know, grew up with, yeah. never had, haven't seen anything. Um, so for me, it's really like, it's just reinforcing my, my love of those, those, those films. That's, that's all. I mean, I don't, okay. I never had trouble with them to begin with. Okay. Cool. I have more problem with the post <laughs> We'll get to that later. We got to look yeah, out we'll, of ways. We'll, 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 what, 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 what about you? you know, for me, you know, this is something I totally skipped and it's, it does fill in a lot of that gap. I remember thinking to myself when, you know, they announced that episode two was going to be the beginning of the clone wars that, you know, okay, well, great. Episode three will be all about the clone wars or episode two will cover the first part. I've always felt much as, as we discussed, I feel about the sequel trilogy, how there's a missing middle part that that's been the case with the prequel trilogy. And this redeems that by filling in all those gaps, like you said, DP, by giving me all the information about who these, who commander Cody is, right? Who, what's the relationship between the Jedi uh, and the clones? Why does Palpatine know all this stuff? Why is he able to pull the wool over everybody's eyes? Uh, you know, what exactly happened in the clone wars? What aliens were on what side, blah, 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 right? All that stuff has needed to be fleshed out for me. And it really is being, being done so very well. In addition what this watch through is giving me is a lot of new perspective on what's being produced by Disney now. So everything from Ahsoka to, you know, more understanding more about what the Mandalorian, the band of Mandalorians are, right? What this death watch thing is understanding the schism, you know, that's all stuff that I'm picking up here. And it's going to make me a lot more appreciative of what happens in episode three because I'm going to have a lot more invested in these characters because I've spent so much more time with them. So it's going to be really cool. I'm really enjoying it a lot. And you know, what's really cool is everybody we've talked to about this keeps telling us that it gets a lot better after here. So <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, Oh wow. I can't wait. If it's, yeah. if it's, if it's this good now, I, I just oh, can't man. wait for, you know, the next few seasons. What I'm really liking about this is that it's not your typical cartoon. It's an animated series, you know, what we what we got with, say, maybe like Justice League. We got more nuance with superheroes and stuff. What we got with like Batman the animated series, what you're getting here with Star Wars, they're not saddling it down with like just your typical, OK, you're going to see Ahsoka adventures every episode, her and Anakin and everything. Sometimes you don't even get Anakin for a whole episode or Ahsoka. You know, you got like some some, um, you know, some clone stuff just going on with those characters. They're really concentrating on character development with this show which i i, I it's, it's already even disrespectful to call it a cartoon it's a bona fide animated series everything looks great i really like the look of coruscant you know what i mean the coruscant underworld here at the end of season two was so excellent and that's something that in legend series and in uh you know the books they go there a lot right they're always like the cd underbelly of coruscant and you know you hear about it and you don't see it and this is such a perfect description of this world city you know, with, with levels underneath. Uh, I really appreciated seeing that a lot. It actually was a great visualization, something I've imagined in my head a bunch from reading the books, and uh, I really liked that a lot. It was really cool. Yeah, I mean, I, to say with you guys as well, I mean, this has really been, like, to me, it's just, you know, seeing this more and more in depth. And, and I remember watching it in the, even in the past. It's, when I've watched it, it's kind of something I've watched and just kind of, like, casually watched, but... When I watch the detail on this, it really brings back appreciation for a lot of characters that I, you know, kind of grazed over that I skipped. I mean, it even like Hitch said, it's it's just something I it almost makes it kind of like a prerequisite for everything to kind of throw one of these in to tie things together because there's so many things can be fixed, I think, in this short span. And obviously with this series, as long as it was, um, obviously may take time, but it, it's you know, it's it's genius. For them to tell these short stories to tie everything together and looking forward i mean it's just you know it it, it just makes it just up. just for the span of uh, attack of the clones to ring the sith it's still other star wars story you know stories yeah. that need to be told and everything but they right. got so much stuff to tell in between those two episodes which is right. crazy yeah and like it said i mean i guess you know as we grow older i I never really thought about it, but yeah, you needed Revenge of the Clones is one of those like uh, two parters. You know, you see the, you know, Mocking Jay or something, part one and part two. This is mm. where they could have really split the movie at that halfway point and gave us a two parter, like build up the Clone War actually in first part, and then the second part actually have the war, and then obviously the outcome would be you know Anakin and the Revenge of the Sith. But 
yeah, this this definitely needs a two parter, and it's even like you know, like um, Ken has said before, you know, it's just one of those things that's you, you're making a movie, you're doing all this stuff, all the effects. I, I think sometimes you lose vision of the story you're telling just because of everything going on. And that happens a lot in these big blockbuster uh, movies, and that's what I think. Even the even, all of the Star Wars films do sometimes there's a little bit they're a little overdone uh there's moments some of them where i think oh they really went with the special effects you know they really had to like phantom menace was full of special effects i mean it was really like they george was using every single <laughs> they had in his he, work everything he got, he got excited yeah he scaled it back a little bit in uh uh attack of the clones he pulled back a little bit he really concentrated on the battle scenes but a lot of other on the dialogue the, the personnel revenge of the sith was a nice mix of everything right. yeah, special yeah. special effects but then you got the story i think what's great about this animated series uh like sam said this is like this is like this is like really getting into the the characters and story and plot not worrying too much about the special effects you know that they're, they're there but you're really like interested in the characters and like you said like we didn't need to see Anakin every episode. We could see like some some clone, and and it was great. Or a Jedi, uh, or introduce us, you know, flesh out where did the bounty hunters come from? So yeah. the bounty were a, a product of the Trade Federation and the Republic fighting each other, and these bounty hunters sort of like were uh, disenfranchised. I mean, no one really wanted them, so it just gave this it, nice breeding ground for. Uh, criminals to sort of start taking advantage of these smaller systems and uh, small business it was the beginning of like evil small business and they could just <laughs> do whatever they wanted because there was really no rule there were some planets that had no police nothing they could go there and do whatever they want so they were they, I mean, and and then you then you in empire and empire strikes back you saw all these bounty hunters like who were they bosk i mean didn't know who that was right. now we know yeah so yeah so you know learning about bosk um ara singh you know getting some background on some of these uh these bounty hunters was really uh i'm gonna go back and watch everything now with a new you know new perspective on some of these characters too so I don't know. I mean, it's Star Wars. I love it. It can't. <laughs> I don't know. Like when, when I'm we, just, I'm just glad you appreciate the the animated stuff now. You know, so we brought you on board for that. That is awesome. Yeah, and I did throw it to the side when it was when it came out. I was, I keep saying that. I did. I was like, I ain't watching that. It's just crap. It's, it's a cartoon. What am I watching that for? But uh, <laughs> you know, I would, you know, that's like animation is the new the new thing. I guess so. Well, you 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 couldn't really tell this type of story in a yeah. movie. You know, I mean, it's it's just the nature of the beast in a in a It'd serialized format. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You in, in a serialized format, this has to be a drawn out thing. It kind of reminds me of um like the 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 what's what's out right now, WandaVision. Um, how mm -hmm. watching um Age of Ultron, I went back and watched that movie, and it's a whole new thing compared to when I seen it when it first came out in the movies mm -hmm. and everything. It, it, it just brings, it just clears so much stuff, brings so much stuff in perspective, not only for like, you know, Wanda, you know, but for like, you know, other things that happen in like in game and stuff. That's what this reminds me of, you know, with filling in the gaps, filling in like, you know, the story beats and filling in a lot of the characterization in the, um, the Star Wars, you know, between Attack of the Clones and uh, Revenge of the Sith that you just have to really appreciate by watching this series. In some cases, you might end up appreciating it a lot more, you know, because of the deep character development. And I guess as you get older, you know, you get to begin to see and you begin to see a lot. You begin to be a lot more mature about certain things. The perspective is just totally different. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, that's that's kind of how I view it anymore. It's just it's it's like a fresh set of eyes looking at something. It's it's completely different. And if anything, you know, it has me wanting more. You know, obviously they have so much on their plate. Um, I, I think there's one or two animated series has come out coming well, out. Bad Bad Batch is supposed to come yeah. out in June yeah. or something yeah. like that. It'll so. be Bad Batch. Um, the High Republic will probably have some animated stuff as well. But you know, even some of these, you know. I'd like to see some stuff with Luke, you know, something during the original sequel trilogy. I mean, obviously they have enough on their plate, but it's just, you know, watching this more and more, 
has me yearning for more of these animated or even these short story formats, as we said, whether it be this or the Mandalorian type, this 25 minute, whatever, whatever you want to call it, these short stories are, are seems like the way to go because you get so much more, even yeah. if it is maybe like a book of Boba, maybe if it's a eight episode arc, it's something to kind of tie up loose ends that you might've had or, or just wanted more further development on. Yeah. Yeah. I know probably seeing Boba for Kim was probably just a highlight of his day. <laughs> oh, Great. And I, I had like, this is, this is what I they should do. They need to do this. They need to show the, the revenge aspect of his personality. Like something drove him to be this like mercenary, mercenary murderer, killer, bounty hunter. Something drove him to do that. And this is, this is what it was. Mace, Mace created Boba Fett. I mean, God, I mean, maybe he would have been like this angry person, but maybe he would have uh, taken on, uh, you know, maybe a different, a different personality trait. But I think that, that that moment in his life is what created Boba Fett. Yeah, classic villain trope. You know, you killed my father, or you, um, you know, you did something that really, you know, made me angry when I was a child. So. I'm gonna grow up to be this bad person, you know. But that's yep. a legitimate thing that happens. I mean, how many people? How many people joined up, you know, the military after 9/11? How, I mean, we saw what happened after Pearl Harbor. That's a normal thing, right? You attack yeah. me, uh, you know, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna hit you back. It's kind of a kind of a human thing. Uh, one thing I've, I'm learning about these animated shows is that the the difference between um, the Star Wars movies and these animated shows probably comes down to the degree of budget. In a lot of cases, because ultimately, like, there is no such thing as an X-Wing fighter. So it's not like they're getting real footage of an X-Wing on any of these movies, right? I mean, right? That's We all understand that. Right. So ultimately, the reason the Clone Wars is going to work is because the pieces in between the characters is just exactly what Star Wars is. Like I said, I mean that you could you could you could just maybe refine the surfaces better, throw out ten times the budget at it, and it would fit right into any of these movies. And so, you know, that's one of the reasons why it works so well as animation, because, you know, one, uh, because of all that, um, because it is like an imaginary place, of course. And the other thing is, like you guys are saying, it's good in these little snippet hunks, because that's what a Sunday serial is. That's what a serialized Western is. It's 20 minute hunks. And then we move on to the next thing the next week. So it's 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 it works because Star Wars is itself an echo of this exact format. And so when we see it presented to us in that format, it already feels natural that we're seeing a, an ongoing story like this week after week after week after week. You know, a saga, mm-hmm. soap opera, you know, it's, 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 it's meant to be told in this manner. So it's almost like um, the, the movies were being real, const- you know, it's, it's constrictive a word. I mean, the, the construct of, you know, putting those in the movie form, especially the way the sequels were laid out, it wasn't really... It was told in that format, but these these episodes and everything basically it seems like this is how it was meant to be told. It almost feels like this is the this is almost like the only piece, the only bridge of Star Wars that's actually exists, right? Like if you look at all these episodes of being like uh spans, right? Of being pylons, and then the in-between time is the span. Like how do you get from episode one to episode two? There's not a lot there, right? There's not a whole lot of information there. How do you get from episode say six to episode seven right not a lot there yet episode um three to four they're starting to fill that in right we have uh solo we have rogue one we have rebels we have all that stuff but this here between two and three seems done like this is finished this is the plot of what happened in between these two so i appreciate it as being like if they actually had started making this from the beginning with unlimited budget, <laughs> it would look, all of this would look, I think, a lot like what is between two and three. And so I appreciate it for that reason. Right. And as we move on to season three here, um, you know, we, we, I guess we continue on. Um, looking at that, I believe it's around another 22 episodes. This, ep- this uh, season actually is probably one of my favorites because of the middle of the season. Um, yeah. It, it's yeah, it has some stuff I like. So a lot more, a lot more deeper stuff. Uh, starts slow, but it definitely gets going. Um, just looking at a breakup. 
I mean, know. the middle section is going to be hard to break because it's literally that we'll have to run out a little longer as far as the episodes because. When you get to this part, that, that every episode is like a ten out of ten in Ken's eyes. <laughs> I, I would say, yeah, it would be from 12, 12 to seventeen are all ten out of tens. So, okay. so the okay. second set is so going to be to seventeen. Why don't we do? Why don't we do like yeah. nine? Is that, I know that's a lot. Can do that. that gives us nine and then eight. And again, you said it's going to be a media. And then we can break down. The, yeah. And in the end will be, I mean, it's decent, but it's, it's, it'll be kind of like the, the crescendo. So um, we can do that. Sounds good to me. For sure. So um, yeah, everybody, it looks like we'll start season three. Um, part one will be episodes one to nine. We'll review uh, next week again um, and kind of go from there. Uh, we got any feedback on our socials this week or any questions or anybody, anything interesting you got? I mean, Tom Hastings always coming through with his fantastic oh, yeah. memes. You know, he 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 has his cover. He had one with Chuck Norris. You um, did you know Chuck Norris had a role in Star Wars? He was the Force. <laughs> <laughs> I, the I love when he lifted that X wing out of the out of the. Oh one. man, it's my favorite. And then there's another one. Um, a picture of um, um, Darth Maul. When you realize Anakin has terrible romantic dialogue in um, Attack of the Clones because he hasn't talked to a girl in two years. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they're, they're coming up with some decent stuff. Thank you guys in the Facebook Thank group. You. you guys always come through, you know, just to keep it moving. You know, um, just 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 keep keep that feedback coming. Definitely, definitely. We uh, and like I said, uh, DP said, and we've all said that we, we appreciate everybody's interaction. Uh, something we we look to do is keep giving you content, uh, keeping a voice for everybody, and keep making it fun. I mean, you know, with these, whether this be a live view or even a podcast, we want to, you know, you to have those discussions in the car with the other half, or it may maybe your children, anybody. I mean, or even yourself. Just just you know, different ways to spin it. You know, of different personalities. All four of us, you know, watch it viewed from different angles. So it's, you know, we always want to give you guys you know, different perspectives. You know, kind of like, like I said, that debate. You know, is, is what we we gear for. So, uh, you know, we're going to continue to keep doing that uh, as we lead into season three here. Um, and other than that, guys, as we close out season two, and this is our finale episode um, uh, for the nerds. You know, we just like to say thank you again, and um, this is the way. This is the way. This is the way away. Looks like a cheap Chucky doll. <laughs> he does. <laughs> a cheap one? <laughs> yeah. he, he, he didn't get you didn't get the freckles on him. Look how angry he is. Go back to that. Check you down. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Fury. Are, are we clear? Oh, he's a he was a little shit man. <laughs> little Bubba was a little shit man. I'm like, okay, this guy here, he needs to be taken care of. <laughs> he needs oh, to die now. Yeah. Yeah, that last.
Nerdcyclopedia.